Welcome back to another edition of Smoke Signals. I'm Matt Montgomery along with head football coach and athletic director Chris Tabor. Fighting Indians set to kick off the 2013 season at the Tomato Bowl as the number one ranked Carthage Bulldogs will be rolling in Friday night. And coach, welcome back. And uh, it's been an interesting uh, uh, start to the second year for you guys. Let's roll back to the spring. Uh, last year you made the playoffs in your first year here, but I know that you wanted to get that spring under your belt where you had those 18 practices and really got a lot accomplished. Yeah, the spring football is definitely more important to us than the extra week and two a days, you know, getting our kids prepared for the summer and, and getting the knowledge base built. Uh, and it showed, you know, coming back and starting fall practice, you know, our kids retained a bunch of the stuff that we did in the spring, which made our transition a little easier getting ready for Carthage. Of course, uh, lost a lot of seniors last year. And, uh, I mean, I haven't done the actual math, but something like 80 to 85 percent of the offense left. But you were able to plug in a lot of those gaps and holes. And, of course, you got Carter McCown back at quarterback, the trigger man. But you just kind of just replug guys into your system back in the spring, and I know that's why it was important you to get that done. And you found some pretty good offensive players. Yeah, and, and our younger kids had a lot of success last year too. So we knew, you know, with them playing on, at the JV or being a true backup for the guys that were playing, they got a lot of playing time because mm -hmm. our our kids that we lost last year were two way starters. They needed breathers. So you know, guys like Tony Lane that had to play a bunch for us, Chris Cross had to play a bunch for us. So you know, we've got those guys back that have been in the system mm -hmm. for a year, and then you throw in a Trent Sansom and a Cash. Cleaver and uh, you know Day Day Thacker. I mean, you got guys that have been doing it and understand our concepts and our schemes. So uh, I, I think we're just as talented. We're younger, obviously. You know, we're not the experience that we would like to have right now. But I think our, our kids are talented. Well, that's one of the things that you talked about already in some of the some of the press about this year's football team is that. What you're excited about is the depth because mm -hmm. last year we just didn't have it. I mean, we get toward the end of the ball game, we lost several ball games at the end of the ball game because I guess we were so tired. But now, not the case. You have a lot more depth. Yeah, well, I mean, we're almost one side of the ball now. You know, our defense has their 11 starters and our offense has their 11 starters. Well, the only place we're going to be rotating is going to be a running back right now. You know, all of our receivers are one side of the ball. All of our linebackers and D-line are one side of the ball. So it's going to give us that capability of actually making adjustments during the game on sideline and talking to the kids and also getting them a shot of water and a break before they go back out. So hopefully that will transition to being fresher in the fourth quarter and be able to finish those games You know that we should have won last year in the fourth quarter. We know your philosophy as a former offensive coordinator and you still call the plays. You like to play fast. Last year, I mean, you were running sometimes 75, 80 plays a ball game. I know that's still on the table. Have you been able to, to get more of the offense in uh, here in your second year so that you can play faster? Yes, we've been, you know, it's been very pleasant to build out, actually add on to what we did last year. You know, we've got more of our run game stuff in now. We've got, you know, a little bit more of our exotic pass game in and still being able to play the tempo that, you know, can get us to 75 or 80 plays a game because, you know, we're looking to, to get as many possessions as we can a game. We know there's going to be some three and outs. We know there's going to be some situations where we don't score, but we feel like the more opportunities we have the ball to score, the more points we can put on the board. So it's definitely allowed us doing spring ball to open up our offense and, and actually dive into the things we really want to do with it. And, and you'll see some differences this year. Coach, talk about last week you uh, scrimmaged Bullard, went over there last Friday, and of course, scrimmages are scrimmages. I mean, people try to make a lot more out of them, I think, than really what they are. Right. They're, just, they're just glorified practices against somebody that you don't know. That's right. And you haven't schemed, you haven't done anything, because let's face it, Boulder was running stuff that you guys just won't see. But talk about the effort and the performance of your players. Well, the, the effort was great. You know, kids were flying around and, and tackling the football offensively. You know, if you watch the offense, we had our we had our times that we looked really, really good, and then we had our times we kind of sputtered a little bit. The one thing you didn't see is you didn't see the ball hit the ground. You know, our kids made catches. When the ball was thrown to them, there wasn't a drop ball. When our running backs, there wasn't fumbles. There wasn't pre-snap starts. That's what where our emphasis was on the spring is pre-snap penalties got to be cut down. Keeping the ball in our arms and not on the ground has got to be cut down. And we saw that. So we're headed in the right direction. Defensively, you're exactly right. We've been working Carthage for two weeks. So Carthage doesn't run option. And, and, and we didn't show what we've been working for two weeks. We showed our base defense. They kind of game planned it and had some success, you know, and that's typical. But you didn't see us blitzing a bunch. You didn't see us doing all the things we do because we want. It's an evaluation period for us. Who can play football, and make plays, right. and, and that's what we were looking at. If you watch the scrimmage, we were in, you know, our three-three stack and cover three all night. We didn't adjust because we want our kids to be able to play football. That's what we have to evaluate. So yeah. scrimmages are scrimmages. I don't. Yeah. You, you can ask me how many touchdowns. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how many they scored. You know, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, did we get better and did we 
kind of solidify some of the positions that we needed to solidify. Yeah, I didn't understand why uh, Bullard had the, the red jersey on their quarterback and said, don't hit him, and then they would run the veer, they'd run the option. Yeah. You know, you couldn't yeah. tackle him. So, really, I mean, uh, that's what scrimmages are for, is just to see uh, who wants to hit, who, who where's the effort. That's right. What have we learned? So, right. and plus when I look up in the stands, Coach, and I see the entire Carthage coaching staff up there, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you want to show a whole lot. No, and we didn't do a lot offensively either. You know, we were very basic, you know, the same kind of stuff that we taught in the spring. You know, wanted to see if our kids can run our past concepts. O-line is 10 times better than what we were last year. You know, Carter had a black jersey on, but he was still live, mm -hmm. and there wasn't one time he got touched. So, you know, those are the good things. You know, we look back at it, and we evaluate by position. You know, people from the stands look at the whole scrimmage yeah. like a game, and, and that's not how we're looking at it. You know, if we wanted to game plan uh, Buller, we'd have game plan, and we'd have thrown the hitches, and we'd, you know, we'd have thrown the stuff right. that they, we knew they would give to us, but it doesn't let us see everything that we want to show to so, so our kids can play. So. Well, it's all for real this Friday as the Fighting Indians will be entertaining Carthage as they roll in. And, Coach, I've heard you say in practice a couple of times and maybe a couple of other the coaches say, this is number one Carthage, this is number one Carthage. And is that that's the attitude that you want our kids to have, I suppose, is that this is a good football team and you got to know who you're playing. You're not playing, excuse me, Bullard, but you're playing a really good football team. you got to step up your game. Yeah, it's the same thing we told them last year. I said, what an opportunity. Yeah. You know, you get the number one team coming to your house this year and, you know, you get to display what you can do and, and knock the number one team off again. You know, we did it last year. Our kids believe they can beat them. So, you know, we're going to keep throwing that out there. I mean, we want them to understand you're playing one of the toughest non-district schedules in the state of Texas. No doubt. You're mm -hmm. playing number one Carthage, and in two weeks you're going to play no number two Gilmer. You're going to play number 22 Palestine. You're going to play number 17 Henderson. I mean, you're playing good football. And it's just going to prepare us for district, which it did last year. You know, regardless of what our record is coming out of non-district, it doesn't have any bearing on our district exactly. performance. So we want to play the best. I don't, you know. Well, you, you got off to such a great start last year. Your, your first head coaching uh, game, you won. You beat Carthage. And what, they've lost maybe one game in that stadium. Yeah, that was uh, their second one. That was their second one, and you were involved in both of those yeah. losses. And uh, somewhere, I think Scott Surratt's probably written that down yeah. by now. So Scott doesn't uh, like me too much right uh, now. But they have everybody back. I mean, they have two D one receivers. Uh, Bogan shoots is a, a Division one type quarterback. Pipkin, the running back. They've got a massive offensive line. Talk about Carthage, and uh, we know what they do well, but we want to hear it from you. Well, you know, our game plan is basically kind of the same thing we did last year. You know, they are very, very good on offense. I mean, they're, you're talking about 10 returning starters that are three-year starters that have been together and played together since seventh grade. Defensively is where they lost some of their talent. You know, they had three returning starters on defense. So that's where we've really got to take advantage of them. The big thing from us is getting them out of the things they want to do, which is play power football and run over the top of you. When we did that last year and got them into their spread stuff, you start seeing us have success and you know and coach Wally and I talked about it yesterday what people don't realize last year is we finished the last two quarters with three backup linebackers and still beat them wow because Shaquille was out and yeah, Bryson right. was out and, and yeah. you look out there and it's Ornick and Mendoza and Ewalt were playing and we still yeah. beat them so it just it's a testament to getting them out of what they want to do and making them do their secondary choice and then we can have some success with them and I think we can do that again. Carthage is obviously a, a power football team. You know, Bogan Chiefs is a good quarterback. He's got the great receivers, but they really want to run the football. Talk about what your defense has to do to to stop that, that running attack. What we got to do is we're very fast up front. You know, you're not going to look out there and see, you know, defensive ends and defensive noses that are, you know, 6'3", 250 pounds. You're going to see 6'3", 190, 200-pound kids that can run. And that's what we rely on is those guys eating up gaps and making the ball go where it's not supposed to go. You know, whether it's bouncing it or turning it back to someone else and keeping those big kids off of our linebackers. And that's what we got to do. And that's what we had success with last year offensively you guys I know that it's an old saying you know we're going to do what we're going to do um, and, and when you get into these games like this right here is it we I mean I know obviously you want to beat Carthage but you don't want to show too much before district how much will you unfold your package in games like this and non-district as you move toward the district race later on well we're going to do everything we can to win I yeah. mean if, if we've got to show something we're going to show something if we think it's going to hurt them then we're going to show something you know I've been in East Texas now for six years, so people have seen my offense. All the teams we're playing, we've played the, at Chapel Hill and here in the last three or four years. They know what we do. 
you know, it's basically what are they game planning for us to do? Do they think we're already ahead of schedule on our install or do they think we're going to be like every year and just do what we can be good at right now? So, you know, we've, we've thrown some, some fluff in there is what we tell the kids, you know, some eye candy. We, do, we got some things on our our base packages that we think we can take advantage of them. But, you know, we're going to throw everything at them. I mean, it's not one of those things. I mean, we do what we yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, if we got to use it, we're going to use it. We're not going to hold it for somebody. So, Throwing the football, obviously, is a focal point of the offense. But you've said since you've been here that we have to be able to run the football. Mm -hmm. uh, last year that was a problem in some right. ways. But you talked about how much better the offensive line is, how much more they've improved. Talk a little bit about the running game, how you think it's progressing. Because you've got some guys back there. Uh, I think people are going to be very impressed with Braylon Parrish, LaKendrick Anderson. Of course, Stacey Cummings is coming back from last year. Uh, you've got the guys that can tote the rock. Talk about your running game and where you think it is right now. Well, we're, we're headed in the right direction. We're right where we need to be. we still got to get a little bit more physical up front, but we're bigger. We, our kids understand the scheme and they're harder workers. So, I mean, they get after it in practice. So. We're, we're finally to the point where we want to be. We've got four legit running backs that we can hand the rock to. So, and, and that's our and that's our scheme. And we want to we want four guys on a rotation. So we have fresh running backs in the fourth quarter. You know, defenses are tired. We want to have four guys that can still run hard, stay fresh, and make the defense tackle us. So I think you're going to see a little bit more running this year finally that we can get to because that is our offense. We want to run to throw is basically what we want to do. And you know, we still got a good quarterback that can throw it around. And you're going to see us throw it around, but. It's not going to be as much as what you saw last year where it's down the field throwing. We're going to, you know, do the underneath stuff, the high percentage stuff, and then run the ball off of it. Yeah, I noticed last week in the Bullard scrimmage, no less than seven, eight kids caught a football. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, you have a lot of skill yeah. kids. And, of course, let's talk about Carter McCown, returning starter from last year, had the injury bug, played in about half the games, actually, right. because of the injuries. But he, his coming out party was obviously Carthage, and everybody went, wow, the first ball game. and. Uh, talk about his progress that you've seen from him in the spring and grasping everything about your offense. Well, he's just matured a bunch physically and mentally. Uh, if you look at him now, he's put on 20 pounds. He's grown two inches. I mean, he's, he's a legit-looking mm -hmm. Division One quarterback now when you look at him. And, uh, you know, the mental aspect of understanding exactly what we're looking for, I think he's finally there. So you see him in practice. He's now coaching the receivers. He's now telling them where they need to sit down. He's talking to the whole line. He understands what I understand and what Coach Brand understands. So, you know, he understands the offense, which gives us that third coach on the field. So uh, it, it's been a blessing. I mean, he's, he's a hardworking kid. He's going to be very special before this thing's all said and done. We've got to keep everybody healthy. Let's talk about Mike Waldy's defense, your defensive coordinator. Uh, any changes from last year scheme-wise? Because, I mean, last year you had the three-year starters in Haywood and Mosley. They're gone. Pretty young in the secondary with some sophomores. Talk about that scheme and any changes on that. No, it's just kind of the same thing. We're in the same boat there. We've got more depth. We're just young. So, you know, you got kids that are playing corner and safety, and you got other kids that are playing outside linebacker and inside linebacker. We're very deep at the linebacker spot, which is good for us because that's where we got hurt last year is when Bryson tweaked his ankle and when Skill broke his finger. I mean, we were just we were down to no one. Now we've got about six or seven of them that can play, and they're all the same. Uh, in the back end, we, you know, you got Tony Lane back. You got Trey Lawler that's played corner for the last two years. Uh, Braylon Parrish is going to play some, so you have some speed, and then you got Day Day Thacker up top. So, you know, Day Day's a, an LT. He's just a young LT. We just got to, you know, get him coached up where he knows it like Lon Dedrick knew it last year. So, Carthage coming in Friday, coach, uh, opening night. A lot of young players, a little psychology, I'm sure, for the coaching staff to get these guys. I mean, you're playing with the big boys now. Oh, yeah. The eyes are going to be wide. How do you handle that as a coaching staff when you've got so much, so many young players? And uh, I mean, these guys are for young players. They're pretty heady, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, what will y'all be saying to these guys to get them going? You know, they're excited, but you're right. There's there's going to be the the wide-eyed kid out there against number one team in the state when we when we kick off. What we've got to do as a coaching staff is we've got to run offensively something to get them some success early you know whether it's a quick screen we got to get the ball in their hand let them do something so they can get the jitters out defensively kind of the same thing we're going to have to line up in base stuff and let them play football for a few plays until they you know they hit somebody and get the get the adrenaline out of their system and then let them play football i think after you know the first two series yeah. i think they'll be okay it's a couple just of songs be, by the band a yeah. couple of you know things you to kind of get 
get, get a the little, crowd. You know, yeah. the first time the crowd explodes and they're kind of like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Then they'll settle down yeah. because they're like everybody else and like you and I when we play. We sure. don't hear all that. Oh, no. You're you know, focused. After you're focused, you don't hear all right. that. At first, they're going to hear everything. I mean, they're going to hear the band. They're going to hear the stands. They're going to hear the other team's cadence. I mean, they're going to watch Carthage run yeah. in. They're going to yeah, do all that. Go, kind oh my of gosh, stuff. they're yeah. huge. And, you know, it's like I tell you gotta them. Gotta get over it. That's it. You gotta yeah. play football. Coach, talk about the keys to the game for your guys to open up the season with a win. I think you know this year. You know, last year we kind of got away. We got away with a with a sloppy one. You know, we had a bunch of turnovers. They had a bunch of turn. I think this year it's the team that's going to make the fewest mistakes. I think if we can control the football, if we can not put it on the ground, and we need a big special teams play. I think if we can get a big special teams play early against Carthage and get us going, we can get that momentum. I think we can get them chasing us all night instead of us trying to catch up to them like we did last year. Well, it's opening night at Tomato Bowl as the Fighting Indians are going to be welcoming the Carthage Bulldogs in as the uh, Tribe gets the season kicked off. We'll be back here each and every week to talk about the football games from the prior week and also preview the next week's game. For Head Coach Chris Tabor, I'm Matt Montgomery. Thanks for watching Smoke Signals. We'll see you next time.